So what we wanted to do with this study in this paper was look at the effectiveness of our care model. So our care model we generally refer to as the VERTA treatment. And we wanted to know what effect that could have for patients with type 2 diabetes. So we looked at quite a few things. We looked at hemoglobin A1C and found that after a year on average, the patients who decided to pursue the VERTA treatment could reduce their hemoglobin A1C by 1.3. When looking at weight loss in this group, we saw a 12% loss on average. So for the average participant in the trial, that was about 30 pounds. And we also saw a reduction in diabetes medication. So most people could reduce, if not completely eliminate, the beds that they were on for diabetes. The other thing that we did with this trial is follow a group of patients who were not pursuing treatment with Verda. They were following kind of the usual and standard of care, uh, continuing to see their physicians, their endocrinologists, their diabetes educators. And what we saw with this group was that they had no change in A1C, no change in weight, no change in medications after that year. Um, so in terms of what we can say from the results of this study is that people who were willing to pursue treatment with Verda uh, had a pretty positive impact, I think, on their diabetes care and the markers of the disease. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, in terms of medication reduction, the ones that carried the highest risks were the ones that we eliminated mm -hmm. earliest, and those included insulin and the class of oral medications called sulfonylureas. And at the end of the year, everybody had stopped their sulfonylureas. And what was the number, Amy? Like 91% of, of people either reduced or stopped their insulin? 94% on insulin. Yeah, I underestimated, sorry. Yeah, uh, fair But th that's remarkable that, that people um, had a dramatic improvement in their mm -hmm. hemoglobin A1C and a reduction in their medication use. Uh, and so that really makes us a state very, very different from previous studies that looked at high intensity care with more medications. I think that's a really good point because, and this is kind of one of the ways that I think we impact diabetes care, it's often managed by putting more medications which lead to weight gain, which also sometimes confer a greater risk of hypoglycemic events or cardiovascular risk. Mm -hmm. So I think in this case where we're able to reduce A1C while reducing meds and while reducing weight, we're conferring much greater a much greater um, benefit to the patient in terms of reducing their overall risk profile. Right. And the other important concern that people have is, well, you know, like you made their hemoglobin A1C get better, um, but other, a lot of other things might have gotten worse. We tracked a whole bunch of other things. Um, and uh, triglycerides went down, uh, biomarkers of inflammation went down, uh, the so-called good cholesterol HDL went up all of those were very significant, not just statistically, but in terms of meaningful changes. Clinically uh, meaningful changes. And so, and we had, as I recall, no reported serious adverse events in the study that were attributable to mm -hmm. the intervention. And this was in over 200 people with type 2 diabetes followed for a year. Uh, and uh, the fact that uh, we didn't see major side effects, um, even uncommonly, uh, speaks to the safety of, of this mm -hmm. intervention. We have our next question. Next question is, why is metformin excluded from your definition of diabetes reversal? Uh, excellent question, because metformin was developed as a, uh, a, a medication for diabetes. It's, one of its primary effects is to reduce production of glucose by the, by the, and mm -hmm. released by the liver. Um, but it also turns out that metformin uh, is a very effective drug for preventing type 2 diabetes. And also, it's in animal models, it's been shown to increase longevity. Mm -hmm. So it, because it's an inexpensive drug, which um, has very few side effects, uh, it's no longer a diabetes-specific drug. Uh, and because it's effective for diabetes prevention, and somebody who goes through Verda treatment and puts, you know, reverses their diabetes, um, they're still at risk of getting the diabetes back, certainly if they go back to eating a high-carbohydrate, low-fat diet. Uh, and so we see this as not as a diabetes treatment drug, but as we see metformin as a, a long-term preventative maintenance drug, and we mm -hmm. wouldn't, don't think it would be ethical to take it away from people unless they had significant side effects. Sure. Even in the ADA standards of care, it's still recommended for people who achieve an A1C under 6.5 mm -hmm. in terms of preventing progression back to diabetes. 